Hello again, campers. I'm so thankful that you decided to check out another one of our recipe videos. The recipe that we're going to be making today is called Cowboy Salad. This is from foodhero.org as well. And if you haven't checked out that website, I would recommend you do that because there are, I'm guessing, hundreds of recipes to choose from. I've never counted them, but there's a bunch of them. And one thing I love about all the recipes is they're very simple and they are made with ingredients that you already have on hand, which is very helpful in these times that we're in right now when we're trying to use up what we have on hand. And they are also from Oregon State University, our partners at Oregon State University. So my name is Tracy Minnis, and like I mentioned in the first video, I'm a nutrition program associate with the University of Missouri Extension. So we are just going to jump right in with this recipe today. I want to mention before we get started, it's very important that you always have your countertops clean, your utensils clean, your hands clean, which I've already got mine clean. And in that first video, I did go into extensive hand washing. I did mention, you know, making sure that you scrub for 20 seconds and I showed you how to scrub good and we talked about making bubble gloves. I do want to remind you of that and I hope that you're practicing making your bubble gloves because that's what gets rid of the germs. So it's very important that you do that. Now, um, I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not going to wash my hands in front of you today just because I'm going to try to save on time, make this video just a little bit shorter for you. And we will go ahead and just jump right in to our recipe. So we're going to start with, I'm going to read through the list of ingredients. So if you have your recipe handy, go ahead and grab that so you can kind of follow along with me. I'm going to talk to you about the revisions that I've made and what I've done different in the recipe. The recipe calls for two cans of black bean or black eyed peas or black beans. And it says try and mix or other types. And that's actually what I chose to do. I did choose one can of black beans. And then I chose a can of dark red kidney beans just because if you watch the first video, you're going to remember I mentioned I like a lot of color. And so red beans add a lot of color. And so that's one of the reasons I chose those. The second ingredient is one and a half cups of corn, okay? And you can choose canned. And if you choose canned, you need to drain it. And then you can choose frozen or fresh cooked. I chose frozen and this has been thawed in my refrigerator. The next ingredient is one bunch of cilantro. And I'm gonna tell you something about cilantro. I actually picked this from my garden. This is what I had growing and um, I used some of what I picked yesterday for a recipe. I will tell you though, I'm making this recipe for my family so they're gonna be the ones eating it. And cilantro is something that they like. They just don't like too much of it because it can be kind of strong and a little bit spicy in a way. They put it in a lot of um, Spanish dishes, makes it a little bit spicier. So I chose not to put a whole bunch of cilantro in there because that to me would have been a lot, of, well, a bunch if you buy it from the store is more than what you see in my cup here. And so I just picked like three or four sprigs and that's what I use instead of a whole bunch. But you guys can use, well, just like we've talked about before, a recipe is your guideline and you can change it up to your taste, to your flavor, to what you like. And so that's one thing I love about these recipes also, again, very versatile. The, the next ingredient we are going to add is one bunch of green onions and it says that's five green onions. And one thing that I actually added with the green onions because I have these in my garden was chives. You see this little tall sprig right here. It looks like a piece of grass. It's actually a chive and it, it's very similar to a green onion. It has a really good flavor and um, I liked it because it was a darker green than what my green onions were. So I added a little bit more color. Again, I love color. And so I chopped up some of those and threw those in there as well. Then it calls for three medium tomatoes. Okay, so at the grocery store when I went to go buy tomatoes, all of the big tomatoes, big round tomatoes, were not quite ripe. They were all kind of orange, a little bit pink, and they just did not look like they would have a lot of flavor. A tomato really is supposed to be red, like bright red. And so I went and I found a different kind of tomato that looked like it was a little bit more ripe, and I chose a Roma tomato. This is kind of a, sometimes they call it an Italian tomato. It's a very meaty tomato, not super, super juicy, but it works really, really well for this recipe. And since it called for three medium tomatoes, I chose two Roma tomatoes for each medium tomato. It's about the same amount of tomato. It calls for one cup of avocado. That was optional. I chose not to put avocado in our recipe because I bought the avocado, but it did not ripen before I needed to make this recipe. 
and I didn't want to put crunchy avocado in our salad. Wouldn't quite as wouldn't have tasted quite right. So we're scratching the avocado, and then basically the next two ingredients are our dressing. We're going to do one tablespoon of canola oil, two tablespoons of vinegar. Um, or lime juice, I chose lime juice, and then a half a teaspoon of each salt and pepper. Okay, so for our directions, number one, we need to drain and rinse our uh, beans and our corn, which we don't have to worry about the corn because I chose frozen, but if you have canned corn, make sure you drain it and you rinse it. And the reason though why we um, drain and rinse any canned vegetables or beans for that matter is they are, whenever they're packed into the can, they are packed with a lot of sodium, that's a preservative. You can choose lower sodium or sometimes salt-free canned, um, canned beans or vegetables. And if you can find those, that's great. Um, I was kind of limited on what I had on the shelf and I actually had these on hand, so I just went ahead and used them. And if you drain them and you rinse them really good, you're gonna get rid of that some of that sodium. Now sodium is just another word for salt and that's something that we eat too much of in America and um, we do need it in our diet to keep us healthy but the problem is is we tend to eat too much of it and that can make us unhealthy and so anytime you can cut back on the sodium or cut back on the salt in a recipe you need to you need to try to do that and it's all in what you get your taste buds used to. If you're used to eating less salt um, when you eat things that are that do have a lot of sodium on them or a lot of salt on them, um, it's gonna taste too salty for you. So like I said, it's all much get your taste buds used to. And one other thing I wanna mention, I wanna uh, mention some can opener safety. Whenever you're opening a can of anything, and you're gonna be using a can opener to do that, this is my can opener, but whatever kind of can opener you have is fine. Always make sure you wash the top of your lid. Okay, these cans sit in grocery stores, and you guys just know how dusty your house can get. Well, it gets dusty in a grocery store too. There's also flies and other bugs and different things roaming around, and so gnats, whatever, but they can all fall onto the top of your can too. And you haul them, you know, in the back of your vehicle, um, and I don't know where you store them, but they could pick up dirt and different things from wherever you store them. So always make sure they recommend you just rinse it off with water, wipe it with a towel. This is just a wet towel, but you just um, wipe it off, make sure it's clean. And when I opened these cans, one of the cans actually had a chunk of something on it. It looked kind of maybe like a fly or something, but just always make sure that you clean them off. That way, whenever you're removing the lid, if there is something on there, it's not going to be um, falling into your food and contaminating your food. Okay. So I just wanted to mention that before we go any farther. And again, um, drain and rinse those beans to reduce the sodium. Then it says, finely chop the cilantro and the green onion. When they say finely chop, okay, I showed you those knives last week. Um, remember this was the chef's knife. This works really well for chopping because um, you can get really, really small pieces made with it. But again, if you're not comfortable with a larger chef's knife, a smaller chef's knife will work. Just make sure your parents know that you're using a knife, okay? We went over knife safety with that first recipe. I just wanna make sure that you're still following those knife safety rules whenever you're using one and that your parents know that you're using one, okay? Your adults need to know that. Um, and finally means really, really small, okay? So I've already finely chopped the green onions and the cilantro, and I have them here. And like I said earlier, I did add the chives to the green onions. And then it says we need to dice our tomatoes and our avocado. Okay, scratch on the avocado, but our tomatoes, when they say dice, that means that you cut them in a way so they're smaller pieces um, and they are very close in size. So I showed you the serrated knife the last time. This is what I use for my tomatoes to chop them. And I'm going to actually, I'm sorry, not chop, dice. I'm going to dice a tomato for you and show you really quickly how easy it is. First thing I'm going to do is just take the top of it off. And then remember, whenever we're cutting anything, we need a claw that's holding. And we also need a flat surface against the cutting board. So I'm going to slice this in half this way. And then I have two flat surfaces. I'm going to move this over so you can just see it just a little bit better. There we go. Now, one of the ways that makes it easy for me to dice, everybody kind of has their own way, um, but I think it's easiest to make strips of whatever vegetable you have, and then I like to cross cut. Um, for me, it makes it easier to make similar size pieces because I can um, easily see what I'm cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut each half of this tomato into four slices. 
and then I'm just going to cut across like this. And they're wanting to slip around on me today. Tomatoes, beautiful color, lots of good vitamin C in our tomatoes. And remember, a colorful plate's a healthy plate. So the more color you can add to your plate, the healthier your plate will be. Okay, so we got the tomato dice. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the bowl with the other tomatoes, but I just kind of wanted to show you one of the ways that I dice. And um, But if you choose to do it differently, that's fine. There's no really right or wrong answer. It's just whatever's safe and whatever works best for you. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this over to the side. Now that we have our tomato cut up, we can go ahead and start putting everything together. So number four, it says combine all veggies in a large bowl. I have my beans in the bowl here. I'm going to add my corn. I'm going to add my tomatoes. I'm going to add my green onions. I'm going to add my cilantro, it's finely chopped, I'm actually going to use my fingers because my spoon's not fitting in there very well. And then I do want to mention I am going to add another ingredient. If you go down to the notes, let's see, the second bullet, it says try adding other vegetables such as sweet or hot peppers, cucumber or zucchini. I had an orange bell pepper, look at that, isn't that pretty? And those are sweet. And so I'm going to actually add that because that's another color. Okay, now after we get all of, again, I'm in a bowl that's almost, let's get this back, it's almost too small for everything that I have in there. Oh, this is so pretty. It's even prettier than that pasta salad was. And again, it smells amazing. So I've got everything kind of stirred up there and then I've already got my dressing together. I'm going to go ahead and pour the dressing on. It said to mix your oil, vinegar, and lime juice and salt and pepper together in a small bowl and I did that. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pour that on there. And then it says to toss. Number six, pour the mixture over the salad ingredients and toss lightly. I'm going to go ahead and do a little more tossing and you will be able to look at this beautiful salad. Now, I do wanna to talk to you about some fun ways to eat the salad, because we, we like to eat this different ways at our house. One of our favorite ways, of course, is on corn chips. And that's usually the way I take it to a family dinner, if I'm gonna take it to a family dinner. Um, that's usually the way people like to eat it. Now, I wanna show you a close up, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Just love it, okay. Um, it says, though, if you look at the notes in the first bullet, it says use, you can use it as a filling for tacos. So if I have made this and we're having like taco salads, I'll throw it on top of my taco salad. You can put it in burritos or wraps. I have just put it in a tortilla with some cheese and ate that for a breakfast burrito. Actually, it's good mixed with eggs too. Um, you could put it on top of a burger. One of my personal favorites is on top of a sweet baked potato, uh, a baked sweet potato or just a regular baked potato. Either one is delicious. And like I said, um, it's good with chips too. And it mentions that is really good for a snack. So I just want to thank you again for joining me for another um, recipe video. This is recipe number two. I have one more that I'll be doing. So I hope you check that one out too. And I hope you're having a fabulous time at camp. Again, thank you. And I will talk to you later.